Hello friends, welcome again. So uh, this is the first video in today's theme development series. So in this video, I will give an uh, introduction about the theme development, uh, what are the minimum requirements and how we how uh, we can get started uh, developing a theme from the scratch, right? Okay, so in the WordPress, in, your lo in, in the WordPress local setup, uh, in the site setup, if you go to the appearance, okay, in the themes, we have, we can see a list of the installed themes, okay? So by default, uh, WordPress setup comes with the default uh, WordPress themes, which is uh, 2021 and 2022 themes. And there are other older 2020 uh, themes as well, but that uh, I have deleted, but I have kept these two themes uh, for the demo purpose. Okay. So currently the 2021 theme is activated in my uh, local setup and this is the 2022 theme. So this is the two different themes um, based on like the 2021 theme is the classic theme okay so classic team means uh, uh, we can develop the classic team uh, with the php templates and a uh, few other uh, php files and everything okay and the 2022 uh, team is the block team where we can uh, we can create uh, we can use the block based templates to uh, to develop the teams okay so it's like a uh, it's a part of the full site editing inter uh, feature okay so which is currently in the beta and uh, currently i i have installed the wordpress 6.0 version okay so uh, in my wordpress uh, in the wordpress 6.0 version or i think since um, from the 5.9 uh, we can uh, we have that uh, like full site editor uh, beta version into the wordpress core from where we can install the block theme and we can use the block based theme so in the like in the short introduction FSC is like a user can manage their site, uh, including the templating uh, using the Gutenberg editor, the block editor. Okay, like we can also say a site editor, but don't worry about it. Uh, so th in this video series, we will learn about classic theme development. And in another video series, we will learn about the full site editing. Okay, so currently this video series is focused on the classic theme only. Okay, so that's the uh, two type now two types of team, classic team and the block editor team. Okay, so, uh, and also from the opinions and themes menu, you can add a new theme. Either you can install the zip file or maybe you can install uh, by uh, browsing from the wordpress.org theme directory and you can install the, any uh, free themes available on dot, uh, theme directory, okay? Um, yeah, so now, why, like in the, our previous videos, uh, we have learned about plugin development where we have created a new plugin what are the functionality we can add what kind of functionality and features we can add and extend it or the wordpress uh, default features and everything right so those like what plugin is me like more about uh, managing the behavior of the features and adding the new features right it's like a back end part and the theme so what is theme so theme is to represent our content into the front end right so theme is used to design the website and display the content in in any layout which we want like we can create any kind of layout or the design and then represent the, uh, present the data into the front end okay so uh, you can refer the official theme handbook so official theme handbook is very useful to get started with uh, learning of the theme development and uh, in the video series i will give uh, like i will take uh, references from the theme handbook itself and then give more little bit or not uh, like few other additional informations based on my experience and few um few more information in the depth like from the wordpress core code base okay so from this hand uh, official team handbook you can learn more about the theme development okay so go to the developer.wordpress.org and slash teams and it will be loading the theme handbook okay so what uh, can teams do like the teams can have different layouts right um like whether it's a static or the responsive or either using the columns layout like or grid system like one column two column or anything so that you can like we have main content area then we have sidebar left sidebar or the right hand sidebar or anything right and you can display the content anywhere you want like uh um, like list of the uh, content either post or the page or the media or anything and also like a theme is like completely represent your content into the front end or in the browser so you can manage a typography design elements you can have a css javascript to add additional features into the front end right and many things you can do into the teams okay so teams are we can create a classic themes 
uh, uh, with the minimum requirements. Like there is a two minimum requirements is the index.php, which is our main template file. And another file is style.css, which is our main style. Okay. So if you know about the plugin development into the uh, plugin, uh, we have created one main plugin file okay and in that plugin file we are adding the header plugin header right from where we can mention about the plugin name description version author author information and uh, we uh, up to which wordpress version uh, this, that plugin have been tested what is the minimum requirement of wordpress version and the php version few other extra informations right so similarly into the theme we can add those informations or the like just like a plugin header we have a theme header and we have to add that theme header into the style.css Okay, so we will also go through it. Um, and index.php file is to main template file, which is our main PHP template file, which will, uh, in that file, we can add um, the HTML markup and ran, uh, using the uh, WordPress functions like WP query to list, uh, to fetch the content from the database and display the content, the list of the post, single post, single page, media information, category archive pages, or any other archive pages like user archive page or anything. All of things can be added into index.php. Okay. Since if we do, if we can just keep index.php file for all kind of templating then it will be like index.php file code base will be increased line of code but there are ways there are other template files are there we will also go through it okay into the upcoming videos but as a minimum requirement is two files index.php to render the content and style.css for adding the theme header okay so that into the backend uh theme name and additional information can be displayed and we can add the uh, like css into the style.css file okay but uh, as a important another note uh, is that it's not compulsory to NQ or add or load the style.css file into the front end. Okay, mainly the style.css file is to um, is this the main file from where the WordPress can read the, about the theme information, get a theme from theme, uh, theme information like name, version, author's name any other any other information about the theme right we will go through that as well but only thing is that like because wordpress need that uh, wordpress look for the theme from uh, theme information into the style.css file okay so you can add a css in style.css file and you can load that file into the front end or nq the in nq into the front end but it's not necessary it's not a compulsory okay so you can create a custom css file like main.css or index.css or anything and that css file you can include into the front end to manage all the css for your site design okay so that's another thing and there are other uh, apart from these two files there are multiple files you can add like javascript files uh, we will also learn see how the javascript file we can add or nq into the front end to manage some functionality through the javascript file what are the other template files are there if you don't want to keep everything into the index.php file right and how we can manage it so all these informations and all these development related stuffs we will go through it um, in the upcoming videos okay um so yeah so now now you may have more clarity about what is the main difference between theme and plugin right so basically the plugin uh, we have created like for example the movie library plugin which we have created right in the previous videos uh, that plugin we have created to add some additional functionality to manage the movies right like adding the custom post types custom taxonomies meta informations and few other uh, features we have added and extended okay so uh, so that's about adding or control the behavior or adding the new features to wordpress site right so in opposite the theme is to control the presentation of the content right where you can like in the team will decide like by the team we can decide what design we have to implement what kind of layout we have to add what kind of typography designing aspects elements and everything we can manage okay and that's why uh, since theme is uh, more of the presentation of the content right so the theme should not have any other critical functionality like the like if I am as a team developer, if I am creating a team, okay, and if I also want to add some functionality, right, just like a movie library, I am not creating a plugin, but I'm adding like I'm creating the like theme uh, for the for the movie library management, like for representing the list of the films into the front end. But for that also, uh, for managing the movies content, I'm also adding adding the custom post types custom taxonomies and few other meta informations meta boxes and other functionality around that movie library right and if i'm adding all those functionality into the team okay then user have installed my team 
they are like fine but if the user want to change the theme then what if they change the theme then the, the whatever the functionality i have added to manage the movie content it will also gone like custom post types taxonomies meta boxes or any other features right so so in that case the user has like stuck with the with the like with the current theme right they cannot change the theme if uh, if they change the theme then they lose the functionality they don't have at user interface to manage the content because they have to keep using that same theme so instead of that uh, and it's not a best practice to add a critical functionality because theme can be changed by the user anytime like um generally we the users keep changing the theme designs time to time because design is evolving the uh, people like different kind of uh, designs layouts and anything right so what are the functionality uh like functionality like adding the features and everything it should be into plugin because a plugin is always there we can activate deactivate the plugin so we we are not going to changing the plugin for the functionality right if you want to update then we can update the plugin we can modify the plugin as per our requirements but theme going to change because theme is main is main theme is the main for the end of end users like we uh, the users who visit your website and see the content into different layout right so sometimes we can change the theme so so that's the main thing like we uh, as a team developer we should not add any other critical functionality uh, into the team if it's a team independent functionality right then it should be in the plugin and team should only control the presentation of the content like the designing layout and add those those stuff which are like independent of the plugin right so that's main importance and as a developer we have to keep in mind that as well okay yeah and and like you can uh, you can uh, browse the free themes from the wordpress.org theme directory you can install it uh, you can if you have developed a theme then you can also submit to the wordpress theme.org you can go through this theme review guidelines which is very helpful for the developers okay yeah uh, thanks for watching uh, see you on the next one enjoy wordpress